Hi everyone, welcome back to Google My Business Problems. My name is Brooke Bora with My Clone Solution, and I am here today with Erica D'Angelo of D'Angelo Law. And today we are gonna talk about the difference between the TM symbol, the SM symbol, the registered, you know, with the little circle around it symbol, and when you should be using them, when you can use them, and uh, when you can't. So Erica, let's talk about first the TM symbol. Okay, so people use the TM symbol when they want to claim ownership of the specific logo or trademark word they're using. They do not have to have an actual trademark registration in order to use this mark. They can use it as long as there's not somebody else who already has the mark and has the trademark registered. So you don't even have to have an application filed for the trademark office for you to use the TM symbol. The same goes for SM, but the difference between SM and TM is SM is intended as a service mark for a name or logo that is being used to identify a service. So if you're using a combination, if you're offering a combination of services and products, you'll probably wanna use the TM rather than the SM. But if you're only providing services, related to that logo or mark, you're probably going to want to use the SM. Now, the circle around the R means that the trademark is actually registered. So this is the strongest um, symbol that you can use to show other people, hey, this is my mark. Um, that is only for people who have the registered mark, but it can be on a supplemental or principal register. So either way, you're, you have the ability to use that mark. Um, now, there are times where if you aren't using the correct mark and uh, letting people know properly, there is a legal argument that you might not have the same benefits if an infringement case were to come up. All right. So let's talk through just a couple examples here. So for instance, My Clone Solution is a service-based company. We don't sell any actual physical products. Everything is you know, if we're selling something, it's knowledge or coaching or whatever. Um, so I would be using a service mark until I actually registered and got a trademark. Yes? That is correct, yes. Okay, so now when we're talking, say, a tradesman, you know, like, say, a roofer, right? So how do we classify them? Because technically, it's a service, but, I mean, I guess they're installing products. Does that, what does that fall under? So in that type of industry, that's most likely a service mark as well. They're probably only selling their services, even though they're using marks. But there are other instances where sometimes there's overlap. Um, one example is somebody might have a podcast or a radio show, and their service is providing information. But at the same time, they're selling apparel under the same mark associated with that podcast or radio show. So in that instance, they would probably not want to designate their mark as a service mark specifically. Gotcha. So that, that totally makes sense now. So I hope that makes sense for you, the audience. Anything else that we need to add in here, Erica? Um, I think that it's important to just use whichever appropriate mark it, you have just to put everybody on notice that you have an ownership interest in that mark. Excellent. So I need to go and change up all of my logos now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here, everyone, um, on another Google My Business uh, series. Um, my name is Brooke Borup with My Clone Solution. Erica D'Angelo of D'Angelo Law is, Law is here with us today. And you can get all of her information on the next slide and in the blog post. And if you're just seeing this post, you can actually go to the My Clone Solution blog and see Erica's other videos as well. Thank you so much for, for watching and we'll see you next Monday for another Google My Business Problem series.